Okay, so there are a few things that we got to talk about when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks. We've got three players on the chopping block here today and about 10 minutes of gameplay. That makes for a nice, evenly spaced out show. And so, to kick off today's segment on the Canucks, I wanted to talk about yesterday's game against the Winnipeg Jets. Now, we already made the post-game video, we had talked about the incident at the end of the game, but I wanted to expand a little bit more on what happened there. JT Miller, Colin Delia, Delia not going to the bench, Miller yelling at the guy and banging his stick on the back of the crossbar. In the video we made yesterday, I said that two things can be true at the same time. One, should Colin Delia had probably left the net a little bit earlier than he ended up doing so in the clip, I'm going to go out there and say yes, there was ample opportunity, especially with Besser, OEL, and Miller holding onto the puck in the Canucks zone for Delia to start things out. And yes, at the same time, Colin Delia was part of the reason the Canucks were even able to compete at the end of the game in the first place. He made so many game-saving stops. He was a very important part of the Canucks and their recipe for success yesterday. What we didn't talk about, however, was JT Miller's reaction to the whole ordeal. And the reason I wanted to talk about this specific part a little bit more today is because if you go to the Canucks subreddit, I think it's like six out of the top seven or eight posts on that forum, it's all talking about Miller and his outburst at Delia coming back behind the goal. And then you had yourselves Twitter discourse, everybody's talking about JT Miller. Hey, who's going to trade for this guy now? Oh my goodness, is this the type of guy the Canucks are going to have for the next eight years? The end of this season and then the seven-year extension kicking in after that? Who in their right minds gave this guy an A? And then you had yourselves this article published by Mike McKenna earlier today on Daily Faceoff after his freakout, JT Miller owes Vancouver Canucks teammate Colin Delia an apology. Now, I didn't talk about this as much yesterday. We talked about the error in Delia not leaving the ice when Oliver ekman Larson had the puck and sent it over to Besser, and Besser was skating forward. The Canucks themselves, the skaters, that is, they had multiple chances to continue their pursuit forward into the neutral zone and eventually offensive zone, but instead decided to fall back and circle behind the net multiple times, which you could definitely say is not Delia's fault either, and sort of validates in a way, not entirely, but in a way, the idea that Delia is like, okay, well, they're not going up, so I'm not going to go up either. Like, I can't see the signal. And apparently, just based off of what everybody else was saying, Bruce Boudreaux was calling Delia to go off, and Besser ended up waving to him as well, that in which Delia was not able to see that properly. But JT Miller, on the other hand, this is the one that everybody's talking about because he very much so lost his cool. And I didn't say this in yesterday's video, but I guess I probably should have. Was JT Miller's anger in seeing Colin Delia stay in the net and not leave understandable? Yeah, it's probably understandable, but then again, understandable does not mean justified. Still, I get it, heat of the moment, tensions are running high, blood is boiling, whatever, but still. Was it disrespectful to go and yell at your goaltender in that way and bang your stick at the back of the net? Yeah, it probably was. McKenna makes a great point in this article, by the way, the link will be in the description, and he talks about how if Miller was playing in front of Thatcher Demko, or former teammates like Henrik Lundqvist or Andre Vasilevsky, do you think he would have yelled at those guys if they didn't end up leaving the net? Probably not. And obviously that's just making a hypothetical scenario out of something that doesn't really exist, but it's a lot easier to say, yeah, no, Colin Delia is not Vasilevsky, he's not Henrik Lundqvist, he is not Thatcher Demko, therefore, in this situation, you could debate that Miller was looking down on this guy. In that moment, Miller was asserting dominance over a teammate that wasn't a member of the Canucks for very long, someone who, in that moment, Miller viewed as lesser than him, an AHL goalie in the NHL. Now, that's written in a very dramatic way, but I definitely do see where McKenna is coming from, especially as a guy who was a former goaltender himself in the National Hockey League. I think a lot of Canucks fans would remember McKenna because he was a former Canuck. I believe he came over in what was the Anders Nielsen trade, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, even though Colin Delia probably should have found a way to leave the crease earlier, even though JT Miller's anger is understandable because you could see why he would get upset in that situation, Unleashing all that anger on the guy in the way that Miller did, probably not the best dynamic for the group, and not really professional either, so 
I mean, that's just one thing I wanted to talk about. There are two other pieces of news that I thought were interesting to bring up here on this day. I see clearly. Take a look at the Canucks and their Abbotsford Canucks transactions. Now, I just wanted to preface this entire thing by saying that the Canucks, of course, they were in Winnipeg. You know who else was in Winnipeg? The Abbotsford Canucks. They're going out there playing against the Manitoba Moose. And so seeing both Canucks teams, the Abbey and Vancouver Canucks, respectively, in the same area at the same time, it allows them to make transactions quite seamlessly. GM Patrick Alvin announced today that Niels Oman has been assigned to the Abbotsford Canucks and William Lockwood has been recalled from Abbey. This is essentially a roster swap of both of these guys. Niels Amon heading over to the AHL's Abbotsford Canucks is going to be pretty interesting because with the plan to potentially keep Hoaglander and Pud Colson with Abbotsford for a little while, adding Oman to that team is all of a sudden going to make this Abbey squad all the more stacked. Now, Oman this season had 5 points in 35 games, played 1 goal, 4 assists. Not really the best stat line, but... I really do feel like Oman has been a good player. Like him, Lazar, and Dakota Joshua have been really solid as a fourth line. Like, say what you want about the Miller extension, whether or not that was good or bad, but all the acquisitions the team has made have been pretty all right. I mean, Ethan Bear, of course, he's good. Lane Peterson, he's been good. The signings of guys like Lazar, Joshua, and Oman have been pretty good too, not to mention Andre Kuzmenko. I mean, this regime is not bad at acquiring players, it seems. It's just everything else around the cap space is going to have to work itself out too. But Niels Oman has been a pretty good bottom six caliber guy. However, his advanced stats would go out there and indicate a little bit of a worse profile. There was a debate raging on hockey Twitter about whether or not Oman is actually a net positive or negative player because apparently the stats say that he's a negative guy. But even so, he's still only like 22 years old. So for Oman and his first National Hockey League contract, this definitely isn't a terrible move to look at in his development long term even if we see Oman stick around with the Abbotsford Canucks for an extended amount of time. Just being here, getting an offensive touch a little bit more in the American Hockey League is probably going to be good for him and his overall development long term. Meanwhile, you have William Lockwood coming over here, who has been pretty alright with the AHL's Abbey Canucks, and who I really do see a nice bottom six player profile out of. Obviously, Lockwood has been in the system for a long time. He was drafted back in 2016 in the third round, and he's 24 years old already. But the guy indeed had already played one game with the Canucks, getting an assist in that, so one-on-one -on -one points per game. He's on pace for 48 points and 48 games played, assuming he sticks up for the rest of the year, eh? But, of course, that's a small sample size. In the AHL, the guy's got 18 points in 24 games played, 12 goals, 6 assists, 2. So, you're seeing in Abbotsford these guys that are scoring a bunch of goals, getting called up and getting NHL money because of it. We saw with Lane Peterson, he's looked pretty good. Like, admittedly, Lane Peterson has been way better than I thought he would be. And hopefully for Will Lockwood, we could see similar things coming out of him and his extended stint in the National Hockey League. So, ton of the counselor's thoughts. One, about JT Miller and the entire ordeal with Colin Delia, the way Miller reacted and how that was cool or not cool. I don't think it was all too cool, but I guess we could open the conversation up a little bit more about that. Also, ton of the counselor's as well about Niels Oman and Will Lockwood, what happened with these two, them swapping roles pretty much in the NHL and the AHL. What are your thoughts on the development? so far and how either of these guys have played. I hope you enjoyed this Frisha Shrolls 9 and bye.